Welcome back for this new video where we're going to talk about impact investing. The Global Impact Investing Network defines impact investments as investments made with the intention to generate positive, measurable, social, and environmental impact alongside a fi financial return. In impact investments can be made in both emerging and developed markets. They can target a range of returns from below market to market rates, depending on investor strategic goals. And the growing impact investment market provides capital to address the most, world's most pressing challenges in sectors such as sustainable agriculture, renewable energy, conservation, microfinance, and affordable and accessible basic services, including housing, healthcare, and education. Impact investing is different from ESG, which is a lens applied to monitor and mitigate environmental, social, and governance risk when investing. But there is not the same intention to generate a positive impact. ESG is a set of glasses that allow the traditionally nearsighted investors to look further into the future and try to invest in those companies that are mitigating their arm towards communities, people, and planet. But you can apply an ESG lens to your impact investing strategy. They can be added to one, one of them. <laughs> ESG screens primarily focus on the processes of a company, not the output or impact of the company's product or solutions. All right, so now let's zoom on the core elements that define impact investing. First, this is the intentionality. Impact investing is marked by the, an intentional desire to contribute to measurable social and or environmental benefits. Impact investors aim to solve problems and address opportunity. This is what differentiates impact investing from other investment approaches. This is not a by default investment strategy. The intention to generate, to generate positive social and or environmental impact is the counterpart of what a social enterprise would do. So typically impact investors invest in social enterprise. As I mentioned in the, uh, in the definition, another essential characteristic of impact investing is the measurement. Impact investing relies, relies on evidence and data where available to drive intelligent investment design that will be useful in contributing to social and environmental benefits. Impact management, which means intentional impact performance evaluation and management to drive the necessary impact outcome. It's all about qualitative and quali qualitative data and improving them, which, is, which means as well monitoring impact through feedback loops and identifying and managing impact risk, positive or negative, intangible. Another core characteristic of impact investing is what we call ad This is the specific and direct action or contribution of, uh, of the investors that enables the investee company to increase the net positive impact generated by, by its activities. It also means that impact investing goes beyond a pure transactional mindset. As an example, an investor can provide non-financial support by sharing its network with the investees or providing strategic advice, for instance, supporting the fundraising process, etc., etc. All right, so now let's have a look at the um, more like big picture of where impact investing fits into the, the overall spectrum of capital. Like we did for social enterprises, we're doing the same for impact investing. 
I'm sharing investment spectrum for Phoenix Capital that I like a lot because you can see the different investment strategies map with the IMP intentions. Remember the ABC model, A, avoiding harm, B, benefiting stakeholders, and C, and C contributing to solutions. So on the left side, we have our traditional investors focusing on financial considerations only or mainly and applying the shareholder primacy. Shareholder primacy is a shareholder-centric form of corporate governance that focuses on, mani on ma maximizing the value of shareholders before considering the interests of other corporate stakeholders, such as society, the community, consumers, employees, the planet, etc. Now let's move towards the, mi the middle that we call responsible investments. As you can see, responsible investment is a big category where investment strategies with non-financial criteria are embedded in the investment process. Starting with negative screening. Negative screening is a strategy where investors exclude harmful industries from their investment universe, such as tobacco, alcohol, weapons, oil and gas, mining, pornography, etc., etc. Some investors even go a bit further by ex excluding, for instance, the processed food or sugar industries. Next is ESG integration. Remember, could you tell the difference between ESG investing and impact investing? Give you a couple of seconds to think about that. So, ESG investing is effectively a lens where investors are looking at ESG factors, such as how a company is performing on environmental elements like water and resource consumption, CO2 emission, or corporate climate policies. The S element focus on the effect of a business of a business has on people issues not just within the company, but those affected, affected across the value chain and beyond. Example of, of, of performance on data protection and privacy, gender and diversity, human rights, labor standards, etc. The last piece is the G, and examples for governance and examples span from board diversity, whistleblower schemes to barbary and corruption. So an ESG investor is basically going to look at how a company is doing businesses, the processes, but not the output, the impact the company is creating for their beneficiaries. But there is a thin line between negative screening and ESG investing as the two strategies could overlap. Indeed, ESG is also a risk mitigating strategy where investors exclude companies with poor ESG performance. In a nutshell, ESG investing can both be a risk mitigation strategy, but also seizing opportunities for enhanced financial returns. According to the Global Sustainable Investment Alliance, ESG assets hit $35.3 trillion in 2020. This is a, a, a huge uh, percentage, which now represents 36% of all assets under management. Back to our capital spectrum, the next block is impact investing defined by GIN. Remember, the Global Impact Investing Network. Again, it means investments made with the intention to generate measurable social and environmental impact alongside a financial return. As you can see from the picture here, you can have impact investing that are impact investors that are finance first or impact first. But I'm going to go back to this concept uh, in a couple of minutes. And the last part of the spectrum of capital, this is the right side that covers philanthropy. Philanthropy focuses on impact only and usually accepts capital loss compared to other type of investment strategy. So now I have a question for you. Do you think that, that impact investing 
can achieve market returns. Take a second to think about that. And the answer is yes. Some impact investors are looking for market returns, but some are accepting a higher risk and usually it comes with higher, uh, lesser financial return. So inside the impact investing uh, bubble, if you will, uh, you can find subcategories. Uh, so the two categories that are being defined are investing with or for impact. So impact first investors are prioritizing impact over financial returns, while finance first investors prioritize financial returns, or at least they are not ready to have concession concessionary financial returns. EVPA is also using investing for impact or investing with impact. Organizations investing for impact are taking the needs of social enterprises at the core of their investment strategies. Investing for impact also means that those investors are funding solutions with high risk that no other actors in the market can take or is willing to, get, to take. So those concepts are defined by EVPA, the European Venture Philanthropy Association. Just for a bit of background, venture philanthropy is a high engagement and long-term approach whereby an investor for impact supports a social organization to help maximize its social impact and environmental impact. Venture philanthropists do not only invest in social entrepreneurs, but also in charities and NGOs. But they are not motivated mainly by financial return. So they are an interesting crowd to meet if you are a social entrepreneur. But communicate with, uh, with impact investors. For the social entrepreneur that is starting to fundraise, it's really important to understand what type of impact investor you are looking at. Do you own due diligence so you know if the investor you are talking to puts an emphasis on impact, profits, or both equally? You will need to understand where they stand on the capital spectrum. Are they a foundation, an impact investor with finance first objective, an impact family office, What's the investment industry? The more you know about your, the investor you want to talk to, the more you can shape your message. As I mentioned, impact investor could be private investors such as business angel, early stage funds, VC funds, family offices, foundation, corporate ventures, etc. Impact investors usually have a special appetite for uh, SDG, they could be climate uh, focused, tech for good focused, uh, gender smart investor, and I'll go back to that in uh, in the third video. So basically, when you're about to meet or communicate with an impact investor, do not hesitate to ask questions so that when you send your documentation, you can adapt your language to their profile. I'm not saying lying or exaggerating facts, just adapting your language. So once you have identified impact investors and you want to get in touch with them, I always recommend to include a theory of change and the SDGs targeted by the social enterprise so that the investor, the impact investor can quickly understand what is the intended impact of the social enterprise. Similarly, you can include impact metrics as in what are the KPIs you want to track as a social enterprise and how you're going to improve them? And again, it's not because you are talking to an impact investor that you can neglect the financial analysis and the business operation of the project. So make sure you send 
a strong and sound business proposal. So basically, I recommend that you send an investor deck or a pitch deck under the form of a PowerPoint um, and including all the impact elements as well as the business elements. Now I would like to basically introduce you to a fund that I am working with and which is based in Czech Republic. It's Tilia Impact Ventures. Uh, I'm actually working with them uh, it's one of the first investing for impact fund in uh, Central Eastern Europe, and their mission is to create impact at three levels. They are a sector agnostic fund, which means that they are um, addressing challenges at local level regardless of the sector. They are investing in four themes, social inclusion and governance, quality education, environmental and sustainability, as well as health and well-being. Have a look at their website. If you are based in, uh, in Czech Republic, you can also go meet them. They are really good impact funds. The main part of Tilia's mission is to invest in social, entrepreneur, in social entrepreneurs and help them succeed both from a financial and impact perspective. Tilia is a pioneer in mission, a line tailor financing in its geography using various financial instruments to fit the needs of the social enterprises. The Tilia aims to serve as a model for other VC funds in Czech Republic and the CE region. So again, have a look at their website to find in which company they invested, who's the team, what's their investment thesis and universe, etc and feel free to reach out to them if you want to meet them. That's it for now. Let's take a break and see you in the next